So the Batman has been in theaters for a few weeks now, and I finally got a chance to catch up with it recently. I wanted to throw in my two cents about the latest Batman film and introduce a new series on Brian Rowe Video called Oscar Odds, where I discuss brand new movies and the odds of each one receiving Oscar nominations in the next award season. Today I'm looking at The Batman, directed by Matt Reeves and starring Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, Colin Farrell, Paul Dano, and so many others. There will be some spoilers in this review, so only watch this video once you've seen the movie. Here we go. First up, the pros. What did I like or love about this movie? Well, I have to start with Matt Reeves' direction. Ever since Cloverfield in 2008, and especially 2010's Let Me In, I have been enamored with the work of Matt Reeves. I think he is one of the most reliable blockbuster filmmakers we have. He has a great eye for detail, a talent for propulsive storytelling, raising the stakes, casting his projects really well, and working with his casting director, of course. I think that part of his projects has always been really strong. So Let Me In made my top 10 list. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes made my top 10 list. War for the Planet of the Apes made my top 10 list. The guy has been on a roll. I was really happy when I heard he was taking on the Batman. He's not a cold filmmaker, even when he's telling big epic stories. He really likes to focus on the character and the emotion. It's not just about the spectacle and the action, and I felt that in The Batman 2. He's working with a gigantic budget, this iconic franchise, and we've seen so many Batmans over the years. Even with Matt Reeves at the helm, I was kind of like, what's he going to bring new to the table? Something that we haven't seen before. A three-hour running time? He was going to have to bring it. And he does. He just wows me every time. So I would definitely start with the direction of Matt Reeves. I think he's just one of our best. This, for me, easily is the best Batman film since Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight in 2008. Now, I guess that's not saying a whole lot since the Batman films following The Dark Knight haven't exactly been the greatest. Obviously, there's a lot to love about The Dark Knight Rises from 2012. It's not one of my favorite Christopher Nolan movies. You can feel the length of The Dark Knight Rises in a way you don't feel it as much in the new Batman film. Even though the new Batman is three hours long, it didn't feel that long for me. I mean, it obviously felt a little bit longer than like your average two hour <laughs> blockbuster movie. I mean, obviously you're sitting there a long while, but the story is so captivating and the actors are so good, uh, it didn't bother me. It never bothers me if a movie goes three hours as long as I'm invested in the story. And that was definitely the case for me with the Batman. One of my favorite things in the movie is Robert Pattinson as Batman. I think he's not my favorite Bruce Wayne, but he's definitely one of the very best Batmans we've ever had on film. My favorite has always been Michael Keaton in the two Tim Burton movies of 89 and 92. I don't know if I would put Pattinson second, so I'm going to have to wait to make that call because obviously I think Christian Bale is fantastic too but I really did love him as Batman I think his introduction in the bat suit especially was chilling there was immediately a sense of menace it just felt right really 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 happy with his portrayal of Batman in this I believe it came down to Pattinson and Nicholas Holt I think Holt would have been strong but I do think Pattinson was the right choice. He makes this work really well. I also love the cast as a whole. Obviously, with our history of Batman films, very little can top the incredible ensemble of The Dark Knight. I mean, that movie had everybody, had so many great actors in it. But the cast in this is pretty insane. Besides Pattinson, you have Zoe Kravitz, who is terrific as Catwoman, and Selina Kyle. She brought something new to the role I feel like we haven't seen before. My favorite portrayal of Selena Kyle slash Catwoman will always be Michelle Pfeiffer in Batman Returns. I don't know who will ever top that. That's just like one of my favorites. That was the first Batman film I saw in a theater when I was very young, and it stayed with me my whole life. I really adore that movie, and especially her performance in it, I just think is amazing. But Zoe Kravitz brought something new and fresh to the role that I really enjoyed. She made the character her own. 
her chemistry as Catwoman was really strong with Pattinson's Batman. I thought that worked really well as we get towards the end of the movie. I didn't feel like that was as crammed in as it could have been. It's not perfect, but I thought it worked as well as it needed to. Colin Farrell obviously has gotten a lot of praise because you can't see him. I mean, this is a very rare instance of an actor that we all know, who we've been watching in movies for 20 plus years, that you cannot tell is in this movie. I watched him in every scene as the Penguin. I could not see Colin Farrell. I couldn't see him. <laughs> like, I was like, where is he in the, under there? Like, I really am fascinated to see the behind the scenes documentary about his transformation because it's just insane. Like, his voice is obviously very different. It's not just the prosthetics on his face, it's like the way he carries himself. It just doesn't feel like Farrell at all. It's just very strange. And in some ways, he's so unrecognizable, it's kind of like, why even hire an actor of that stature? <laughs> because you can't tell it's him anyway. It's very interesting. He, he, of course, was great in this. I think my favorite performance in the movie by far was Paul Dano as the Riddler. Paul Dano is an actor I've enjoyed for many years. I mean, going back to Little Miss Sunshine and There Will Be Blood in 06, 07, back to back. I've always been a fan of his, and I feel like I haven't seen him in a great role in a while. And it was a thrill to see him in this play, this menacing, creepy, bad guy. Kind of like with Colin Farrell's The Penguin, you can't really tell it's Paul Dano for a while until he's finally unmasked in the last third. But Paul Dano has always been, in all of his roles, a surprising actor, an actor who takes risks and chances, and he was not going to give us a one-dimensional villain in this. The Riddler, of course, was made famous on film in the 90s by Jim Carrey, and I think Matt Reeves probably understood we could not have another version of that Riddler. It had to be something scarier, more realistic. And it does come close in some scenes as Heath Ledger's Joker in The Dark Knight. In some ways I felt like, well, this could just be the Joker. <laughs> like it doesn't have to be the Riddler because they're both so terrifying. But I really did like what Dano brought to this. Another great opening scene where he appears in the shadows of that dark room. Super, super creepy. I'm never going to forget that. I also thought the action worked well. I thought the chase scene where Batman goes after the penguin, that is a fantastic action sequence. When I'm watching a big Matt Reeves blockbuster, I'm always looking for him to up the ante in the action realm. The ending action of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> I have never forgotten in the last eight years. And so, yeah, he's just a really gifted action filmmaker. And there are just so many terrific scenes of action in this movie in The Batman. That amazing shot where we see Colin Farrell on the left-hand side of the frame laughing as the explosion is set off behind him. And then we see in that same shot the Batmobile appearing out of the fireball. That is maybe the most impressive shot of the whole movie. And there are, of course, many more than those. Next up, the cons. What did I not like about the Batman? There's no one big issue I had with the movie. Most of these comments will be minor, just little things that maybe bothered me or that I noticed. It's hard, isn't it? I, I mean, at least for me, because I thought that The Dark Knight was a perfect Batman film. I have seen that movie at least seven or eight times throughout the years and it just always knocks me out. I just think that movie is blockbuster perfection. When I think of the summer franchise blockbuster movie, I think The Dark Knight, that's the movie for me. And so it's like anything that's coming after that, it's going to be hard to level up. And that's true of the new Batman, it's not at that same level. I do think there are some moments where the movie drags, there are some character bits that don't land, I feel like there might be one too many plot threads throughout the movie. I was confused here and there about the motivations of every character. I mean, there's got to be at least, what, 10? 10 major characters in this movie? And Batman slash Bruce Wayne is dealing with all sorts of rogues gallery villains in this movie. We got a lot. So I, I did wonder if 10 to 20% of some of these plot threads could have been cut down or eliminated completely. I do think a two and a half hour version might have been better overall, 
I think if the movie had been paced a little bit faster, a few scenes here and there had been cut down, I do think the movie would be better for it. The second thing is I felt the character of Oswald, of the Penguin, was underutilized. I mean, going into this movie, when I was thinking about Oscar odds, I thought maybe Colin Farrell will have a shot because he is so unrecognizable. But then I watched the movie, and there are big chunks of this where he's not in it. Like 30-minute-plus stretches where you don't see him. And he's not the main villain here. It's the Riddler. The Riddler is the star villain of this movie. It's a really fascinating, memorable performance by Farrell, and I wish that the movie gave him more to do. I felt like there were some stretches where he was missed, and the character could have been a little bit more fleshed out. I also wanted to fear Farrell's penguin more. He's kind of at times like a bumbling idiot. <laughs> and towards the end, I was more transfixed with his transformation, with the makeup job they did, than being interested in the character itself. I guess the other issue I could talk about, I loved Robert Pattinson as the Batman. I didn't love him so much as Bruce Wayne. It was nice to see a different kind of Bruce Wayne, not super charismatic, kind of brooding, much younger than what we're used to. But there was definitely something lacking in his personality that I feel we've gotten in most of the other movies, even Christian Bale in Batman Begins and The Dark Knight when he is having his fits and is not <laughs> the greatest character to spend time with. There's still a little bit of charisma with like Christian Bale that we don't necessarily get with Robert Pattinson in The Batman. I enjoyed the movie more when he was in the suit than when he wasn't. And that might be something that when I go back and watch the movie a second time that plays better. Maybe part of it was I was just kind of surprised to see that because I haven't seen that kind of portrayal of Bruce Wayne on film before. So that might just be a case of a weird reading the first time around, and maybe that's something that'll get better if Pattinson gets the opportunity to play Bruce Wayne again in a sequel. But yeah, I was more a fan of him in the suit <laughs> than I was of him as Bruce Wayne. So that takes us to, at last, the odds. The Oscar odds, to be exact. Yes, it's very early. It is April. The next Academy Awards are not until early 2023. Yes, we're a long way out. Yes, it's hard to predict right now. But I would say The Batman is probably the first release of 2022 that has a good shot at getting in somewhere. Is it going to get in for picture, director, or any of the top categories? No. Capital N, no. I did going in, as I said before, I thought maybe Colin Farrell might have a shot. I do think his character is a little bit underwritten. He's not in the movie as much as I expected him to be. So I think he's out. I don't think Colin Farrell has a chance at an Oscar nomination. I would say if there's any actor in the movie that has a shot, it would be Paul Dano. But again, he's behind a costume for most of the movie, so I don't think that's a possibility. At least in The Dark Knight, you can see Heath Ledger. Like, you can see his face. You can't see Paul Dano for most of this movie, so I don't think he has a chance. I think if The Batman had been released in October or November 2022, we'd be looking at probably four, maybe five Oscar nominations, mostly in the technical categories, if not all. But its March release puts some of these nominations in doubt. I think if the movie had come out at the very end of the year, I think cinematography would be on the table. I think production design, maybe score, would be on the table. I mean, Batman films have received Oscar nominations in the past. Batman films of the 80s and 90s have won Oscars, and not everyone remembers that. Batman from 1989 won Best Art Direction at the Oscars. Batman Returns was nominated in Makeup and Visual Effects. Batman Forever got a Cinematography nomination. Batman Begins got a Cinematography nomination 10 years later. And then, of course, the most nominated Batman film is The Dark Knight, which received a whopping eight nominations. When I was thinking back, I was like, oh, I think it just got in for Ledger and then like two or three technical categories. It got eight nominations. It got a lot. It got cinematography, makeup, visual effects nominations, and it won two. It won sound editing and it won best supporting actor for Heath Ledger. Now, since The Dark Knight won a couple awards in early 2009, no Batman movie has been nominated at the Oscars. I always think it's weird that The Dark Knight Rises from 2012 didn't get a single Oscar nomination for anything. 
None of the technical categories, sound or visual effects, nothing. Same goes for the Ben Affleck Batman films. No Oscar nominations for Batman vs. Superman or Justice League. I wouldn't call that a shocker, <laughs> but that's, that's a story for another time. Could Matt Reeves, the Batman, break this trend? I think the film is strong enough. I think it's a, it's a great movie. I think it'll probably rank as one of the best blockbusters of 2022. I think it has a chance to get in somewhere. I think the sound work throughout the entire movie is exceptional. I think that sound being only one category now, not two, makes it less likely. I mean... Spider-Man No Way Home was the big blockbuster movie of 2021, and that only got into visual effects. It did not get into sound. No Time to Die got into sound. I don't know. It's it's It feels like the Batman is strong enough to get in somewhere. I feel like it'd be weird for it to just completely miss, even though we're like almost a year away. Again, I think if the movie had come out in the fall, we'd be looking at at least three, four, maybe five nominations. But because of its early year release, it's very well possible it will get nothing. So much of the movie has a realistic feel to it that I don't think visual effects will be on the table, especially in the year we're getting Avatar 2 at the end of the year. We're getting some big visual effects heavy movies I'm just not sure the Batman will make it for visual effects there's production design and cinematography I think some people thought that the Batman looked too dark I think I heard that in one of the reviews I listened to a few weeks ago I loved the look of the movie I thought it was really striking but I could see enough people thinking it's too dark I mean Dune was kind of dark and that won cinematography and that was a big spectacle blockbuster movie so I don't know Batman Forever and Batman Begins can get in for cinematography. Boy, I mean, I thought it looked great. So I think cinematography might be on the table. We shall see. The other nomination I think that the Batman can get is makeup and hairstyling. I'm thinking about the most recent ceremony when House of Gucci was expected to get into multiple categories and it only showed up in makeup and hairstyling. I think about Jared Leto's transformation in that movie. Even though the Batman came out at the very beginning of 2022, I can't imagine Academy voters forgetting the transformation of Colin Farrell into the Penguin. I mean, it's pretty extraordinary. You cannot see him in the movie. Like, it does not look at all like Feral. Forget the rest of the cast. I think that makeup job is worthy in and of itself of an Oscar nomination. The more I think about it, I almost think makeup and hairstyling might be more of a slam dunk than sound. I feel like if it were to only get one, that's the one that makes sense because of Feral. I feel like the movie is successful enough. It's the first really giant blockbuster of the year, and it's a great film. It's not a throwaway Batman film like a couple have been. Like This is a really great movie, obviously made with care, a tremendous cast, a terrific director. So in the end, I really enjoyed the Batman. I would give it a solid 8.5 out of 10. And when it comes to Oscar odds, I am predicting that the Batman receives two nominations, one for best sound and one for best makeup and hairstyling. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the Batman and what categories you think it might be nominated in at the Oscars in 2023. See you next time.